Crown Royal Apple Cobbler. Alright y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Just Lex and we're gonna go ahead and hop right in today. As you know, I'm making my Crown Royal Apple Cobbler. Um, I posted a short video to TikTok and a lot of people requested the full recipe, so here it is. As you can see, I am starting off by peeling my apples and slicing them. For this recipe, I usually use a 13 by nine cake pan or a 10 inch round baking dish. So either one work just fine for the measurements that I am about to give. Before I get into the ingredients, I do want to ask for you to please subscribe to my channel. Um, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Be sure to like this video, comment, any type of interaction allows me to continue putting out cooking videos for y'all. So I truly appreciate your support. All right, so for this recipe, I use about eight large Granny Smith apples. They seem to work the best. And I love this apple slicer here. It's so convenient, you don't have to, even though you have to peel your apples, you won't have to slice them. So that works out perfect. Um, if there are uh, pieces of the core still left on it, you can just simply cut those off and keep moving. All right, y'all, so alongside our Granny Smith apples, for the apple filling, I also use one cup of brown sugar, half a cup of white sugar, nutmeg, and that's probably just about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon, um, ground cinnamon, one to two tablespoons, it's up to you. Um, I do use a dash of vanilla and I use crown apple. Now for that, you're gonna use as much or as little as you'd like. I use about a fourth a cup, half a cup. It just depends on who I'm making it for, but it, it really won't hurt. It cooks down and it adds so much flavor. And that's about it. That's all I use in my apple filling. All right, before we start cooking down our apples, I do want to mention that you will not get the same results if you use canned apples. Um, this recipe specifically calls for fresh apples and I find that it turns out 100% better than using canned apples. I always prefer to just drizzle a little bit of lemon juice, it can be fresh or in the bottle, over the apples to prevent them from browning too fast while we melt our butter in our skillet. I'm melting half a stick of salted butter and adding my apples to the pan. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add my one cup of light brown sugar and begin to mix it up. My heat is on medium, so it is on a medium setting and I'm simply just mixing it around until the brown sugar begins to dissolve. You will notice that you won't even have to add water to this. The juice from the apples as well as the lemon juice that we poured on top and the melted butter makes a nice base so you don't have to add water. All right, when the brown sugar has dissolved, we're gonna go ahead and add half a cup of white sugar and just mix that together as well. Always remember that you can adjust the measurements to your liking. So you're gonna wanna taste it throughout the process. All right, now when that white sugar is completely dissolved, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to add our ground cinnamon. You can use about one to two tablespoons. It's totally up to you. I do prefer more cinnamon. So I will be adding some throughout the process. All right, now I'm gonna add a dash of ground nutmeg. You don't wanna use a lot, but it's just enough for that flavor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and mix that together before we get ready to add our crown apple. Now this part, you don't have to add it and it'll still be delicious, but I am gonna add about a fourth a cup of crown apple. Um, you can use half a cup, but I wouldn't do any more than half a cup. All right, now at this point, you wanna go ahead and taste the sauce. Taste it and see if it's to your liking. If you need to add more cinnamon, you can. If you need to add more sugar, you can. But this usually works out just fine. Just be sure to taste it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my 
vanilla. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla and just go ahead and mix that together. All right, as you allow it to cook, you should notice that the sauce will begin to thicken on its own. I do not like to add cornstarch water mix to thicken it. It usually just thickens on its own from the brown sugar and everything else. So I have it just sitting there simmering. You just wanna allow it to sit for about 15 minutes or so and it should be done but just check on that sauce if it's not thick enough add you a little bit more brown sugar and it should thicken right up after about the 10 to 15 minutes the apples should be done you don't want them to be too soft which is the reason we don't use the canned apples for this recipe um, you want them to be firm but they should have a little softness to them so that you can see that they are cooked this is how they should look when they are done. You can go ahead and eat one because when you do that, you'll know that it's done. Um, they're gonna kinda taste like stewed apples if you had stewed apples before, but they should taste great at this point. And we're gonna go ahead and turn off the stove and start on our batter for our crust. All right, so to a bowl, we're gonna add one cup of white sugar. Then we're going to add one cup of self-rising flour. Make sure it's self-rising. And we're just going to whisk those two together. When the two are mixed well with no lumps, we're going to go ahead and add one cup of whole milk and mix it all together. All right, when it's completely mixed together, it should be very thin, but don't worry, it should be thin. You should not have thick batter. We're just gonna go ahead and add about a teaspoon of vanilla, and that's optional, and go ahead and mix that all together. Just remember, it's going to be very thin. In a preheated oven on 350 degrees, you're gonna go ahead and melt half a stick of salted butter and half a stick of unsalted butter in your baking dish. After that, you're going to pour your batter directly on top. Then you're just going to go ahead and spoon your apple filling on top of everything. Spoon it in. You're going to allow some of the juices to go in with the apples. Um, you don't want to just put dry apples in there. So do add the juices as well while you're spooning it in. I do want to note that you want to be sure to add your apples starting from the middle of your dish and work your way out to the edges just as I am doing. Alright when your dish is just about full of apples you're going to stop and you're going to go ahead and drizzle some of the juice on top. Not too much but you don't want to dry peach cobbler so just drizzle some of the juice on top. All right, after that, you're gonna sprinkle lightly with a cinnamon sugar mix. All right, after that, you're gonna go ahead and place it into the oven on 350 for about 50 minutes, and you should be ready to enjoy your apple cobbler. After 50 minutes, this is what it should look like. So, so good. I really hope y'all enjoy this recipe. If you plan to make it, leave me a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and I look forward to bringing you more recipes.